think you are on mute. Uh, Rishika, I think you're on mute. Can you fix your connection, please? Uh, Rishika, still not audible. Uh, Rishika, maybe try, try disconnecting your headphones and it's okay. <laughs> So we're going to wait for a few minutes and uh, wait for Rishika to join back. Smita, can you check your audio? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Huh. Uh, Sandara, uh, maybe the speakers can introduce themselves. So, yeah, Deva Smita, if you could introduce yourself. Yeah, so hi, uh, hi everyone. Uh, nice to see you at the session today. And uh, I'm Debismata Das. I work as a graphic designer and an assistant uh, content, uh, content creator, a uh, creative producer at Agents of Fish. So I mostly work with the visual material, but also with creating uh, the kind of material and talking about what goes into making Agents of Fish. Uh, Hamsi, you can introduce who I am yourself. Sure, okay. Uh, my name is Hamsi. Uh, Hello and uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, so we at Agents of Fish, um, we're a sex and sexuality education project. We work with different mediums. So we create videos, podcasts, essays, comics, um, illustrations, different mediums that all of which is to say that um, sex has a good name. We give sex a good name. That's our motto. Uh, so what we do while creating all of this is keep pleasure at the center of the of all experiences, which is to say um, that if we uh, put queer feminist perspectives ahead, uh, if we bring to the fore those stories, uh, we give uh, pleasure the head start. So uh, there is an inclusive and a positive frame towards working with sex. And it, that's that's to uh, shift the conversation away from sex is taboo. Welcome, ma'am. Thank uh, you for having us. Our third speaker is uh, Dr. Arjun Kumar. Hey, am I audible? Uh, yes, sorry, you're audible. Yes. Yeah. OK, so let me, uh, sorry for this uh, disturbances. Let me welcome uh, Debisnita, ma'am, and Hamsi, ma'am and 
Dr. Arjun Kumar, sir. He is working as an assistant professor at the Department of Community Medicine, uh, MGIMS Sevagram, Vardha Maharashtra, and is currently the in charge of the Rural Health Training Center, Anji. They are closely working with nearby primary health centers under MOU with district health system for providing technical support. And they have uh, several community-based organizations to provide prevention and curative services to community for social, socially accountable medicine, medicinal education. So I now request uh, Hamsi ma'am and Debismita ma'am to continue with the session. Um, do I go to slides to start the PPT or? Okay. To select agents of fish presentation on oh, okay. the slides, Colin. <clears throat> okay. And uh, I'm going to use the next for going ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, hi, everyone. We are going to be talking about sex, pleasure, and consent today. And, um, you know, as Hamsi said, ki at Agents of Fish, uh, we approach everything from a pleasure, pleasure positive point of view. And that also means, ki, you know, we are not just talking about pleasure and trying to uh, get rid of the kind of shame that surrounds sexuality, but we are also trying to do that through a pleasure positive, uh, uh, through a pleasure positive approach. So even the kind of, like, you know, working with art, even our videos are funny and, like, you know, and pleasurable with song and dance and masturbation poetry contest so pleasure is not just you know something to talk about it's also the framework and it's a guiding principle because when we talk about sex for our perspective is that sex is all about mutual pleasure with consent and uh, that is and it's also a framework that allows us to talk about sex holistically and like you know uh, and you know to also talk about sexual health in a more holistic way uh, so one of the things that prevents us, uh, one of the reasons, uh, one of the things that prevents us from seeing sex for what it is. May I please interrupt just a second? Uh, yeah, yeah. Ma'am, uh, can you please share your screen? Oh, okay. Uh, it's audible, it's audible. Devas Mata, you can go ahead. Okay, okay, and okay. Visible. You can go ahead. Thank you. Okay, I don't need to share my screen, right? No, no, it's visible. Okay, okay. Please yeah. go ahead. So one of the biggest, uh, so one of the biggest misconceptions that uh, ki kind of comes in the way of us talking about sex openly and like usefully is this uh, pre-assumption that sex is equal to reproduction. But sex for pleasure, like the reason why we talk about pleasure is because our sexual lives also, and we do have sex for pleasure. That is a reality that we cannot ignore. And sex, as it is understood now, is understood too much in terms of reproduction. And when we understand sex as just reproduction, it creates a lot of biases and creates a lot of imbalance. And, um, and these biases not just create shame, but it also creates a sort of a lack of information because we are not talking about the whole spectrum of information that we actually need for our sex lives. Um, so I think the one of the biggest biases that uh, comes across is he sexual health is equal to reproductive health. But actually, there's so much more about uh, sexual health uh, than just you know keeping our reproductive apparatus functioning. Uh, you know, it's uh, more it's more than just about, you know, virility or like, you know, sperm count or like, you know, whether you can get pregnant or not. It's also about like a host of uh, other things like masturbation hygiene. We often don't take that into consideration, but sexual health is also to be tackled on an everyday basis that even at AUI, we talk about how to be healthy sexually uh, in everyday life and, uh, you know, like, you know, clean, how to clean your sex toys uh, properly, like when you're using them or, you know, like washing your hands, keeping your nails trimmed, avoiding any abrasions uh, or like even like, you know, certain things like, you know, uh, if we talk about sex from uh, the point of pleasure, we also take into consideration what all we need to take care, what all we need to uh, take care of our sex. Uh, our health and our bodies with regards to sex for example like you know a lot of people don't know that if you are switching from having anal sex to having vaginal sex then you need to change your condom in between you can't use the same condom because it will you know transfer like germs and you know that's a kind of mixing that's not uh, ideal or simple things that you know peeing after sex like urinating after sex al al allows you to prevent stis uh sorry utis uh, 
and also when we talk about uh, when we accept the fact that people are having sex for reasons other than reproduction then we also take into consideration ki we need to know about stis and then and like our choices about contraception and uh, and how our choices about contraception also need to take that into consideration also sexual health is not just about uh, it's not just about bodily health it's also about our sexual health uh, about our mental health uh, the way we approach uh, like we need to have a good relationship with our own sexualness to have good mental sexual health it is a part of our lives we always sort of think ki uh, like you know sexual needs are just like somewhere very low on like you know the hierarchy of bodily needs but it is it still exists it is still important and it does influence our uh, who we are and how we'd like our life to be and uh, and one of the things that contributes to sexual shame is this idea of purity we think that having sex for pleasure is somehow impure or uh, you know that sex for pleasure is inferior to having sex for reproduction and that is the kind of uh, thing that we have inherited about you know sex for pleasure being useless risky uh, and like and that all of that contributes to the shame in our mind and prevents us from exploring our sexual life and of course these things also take a toll on your mental health so when we talk about sexual health we also have to talk about our personal relationship our emotional well being with regards to our sexuality uh, another like you know this big like you know like the main thing about pleasure one of the biggest biases is that sex is not for pleasure and how that also affects our sexual health is that we don't think about contraception beyond birth control um for example like you know one of the things that we need to take into consideration when we talk about contraception like you know safe sex means both birth control and protection it's not just about not getting pregnant and uh, that is usually where the kind of focus comes on to when we talk about safe sex uh, you know the fear of getting pregnant or uh, preventing pregnancy but then we also need to talk about uh, being protected from stis and the focus also needs to shift on the usage of condoms it's because it's one of the most useful not full proof but one of the useful ways of preventing stis uh, so even in our work like you know we try to uh, we try to talk about safe sex in terms beyond just birth control and uh, taking into consideration protection from stis as well and uh, put this focus on condoms as something that need to be used uh, like you know uh, because talking about condoms is also about you know addressing small things like are you wearing the condom pro- uh, properly uh, busting myths like you know uh, will wearing two condoms make you, make you uh provide extra protection or can it potentially like lead to rips and tears because of increased friction uh so, like we have a condom primer which is about like you know all of the things that you need to know about condoms we also have munna the singing condom which is a sort of a flow chart that kind of tackles like uh which you know tackles that question can we the early need to wear a condom like for a, like you know for most part of it like yes we do need to wear condoms even if we feel that you know we can you know withdraw before ejaculation or even if we feel we are with a long term partner then wearing condoms becomes uh, wearing condoms is uh something that we need to do and uh, it is important for us to focus on that too in terms of both, uh, when we talk about contraception and uh, uh safe sex uh also talking about stis beyond just as beyond just like them being scary diseases that we want to avoid uh like you know stis are also we also need to talk about the reality of getting an sti to kind of reduce the stigma around it and when we talk about like you know if our conversation on uh, safe sex is only like you know limited to birth control then it's completely eliminating this this entire other uh, area uh that when we accept that sex is for pleasure as well then we also have a broader and like more reasonable way of looking at our sexual health uh this is one essay by dr anamika pradhan about uh, the kind of biases about uh sex and pleasure that she faced uh, during her practice uh uh from other doctors i'll just read out this quote uh, a few years ago i was invited to a debate by a society of post graduate doctors the topic emergency contraception is the cause of moral downfall of society i spoke about the importance of preventing unwanted pregnancies and the opposition countered saying that this was only that this was the only fear that prevents young women from having sex before marriage so you also see ki the conversation around contraception is also sort of limited by our own biases against uh, sex and like you know want uh, like you know pleasure uh, and sex being for pleasure and one of the reasons that we need to tackle this kind of shame that we associate with pleasure is because people need to be able to think about their sexual selves and their sexual lives free of judgment so that they make the better choices like if there is so much shame as, as uh, 
uh, associated even with like you know condoms or uh, STI testing or uh, emergency contraceptive pills and how will people know what is the be best medical option for them the shame and the fear will hold them back from thinking about what they really need what are the choices even when we talk about contraception we need to really take into consideration what our sex life is like to be able to understand uh, what is the best decision we can make for ourselves um, Another bias uh, that comes up is that of women's bodies uh, and sexual function being only reproductive. We don't talk about female pleasure enough and uh, this creates an excessive focus on that part of her sexual health and no other. And there's no focus on women's pleasure or their sexualness or their sexuality or their sexual needs. And uh, for example, like there's another article by Dr. Anamika Prathan about how there are uh, even in the, I think the term she uses medical pharmaceutical complex like there are uh, there are lots of doctors and like you know people in the field who provide things like hymenoplasties or uh tightening vaginal tightening procedures uh and uh things like you know gift your wife a vaginal tightening procedure for her anniversary like there's all of these things and uh and you we, we also need to question like where is that coming from when we say tight vagina who is it meant to be pleasurable blow? it's clearly meant for the male partner and not for the woman herself and we need to have a conversation about women's sexual pleasure and like we can't uh, talk about it only in terms of tight vaginas or hymens or virginity it, we also need to go beyond uh, we need to talk about foreplay and relationship issues and uh, and everything else and uh, so i think like there are so these biases that, that sort of play into like this kind of lack of attention to women's sexual pleasure and thinking of them as only like you know uh people whose sexual health gets spoken about in terms of reproduction that it it, it, redu it removes this entire space of acknowledging women's uh, uh sexualities and their pleasures and their needs uh, this is one more thing that like a gynecologist uh, Ramnath Bhuyan who wrote about the things he encounters being a gynecologist in a small town and one of the things that the women come to them uh, come to him and say is like it's the most common complaint is the age-old problem key you know the husband or uh, the male partner always finishes first and there isn't that focus and that you know she's not getting sexually satisfied and so I think these are some of the reasons that like and these this is a bias that you probably will also face as medical students as when you go out and practice and it is important that's why to talk about female pleasure i mean i i remember personally as well ki, uh, growing up like in my teenage years we we did hear about like you know men masturbating we did hear about male masturbation like in jokes and uh, in all of these things but we hardly ever talked about women masturbating uh, so we also like at Agents of Fish, we try our best to sort of foreground female pleasure because that's, it is an area that doesn't get talked about much. We need to talk about uh, certain things like, you know, there have been studies that show key, uh, a lot of straight women do not like uh, uh, experience orgasms. And obviously, because there isn't that focus, we also like uh, we carry these biases into our personal lives as well. For example, we had a really good essay about someone who said that she faked orgasms to be polite because she found it difficult to be able to own up to um, to be able to say, key, you know, I need something more in my sex life. Key, I need to need you to try harder or like I like and hence had to fake orgasms. And uh, like even like we did a massive like masturbation, female masturbation survey that allowed us to talk about the various ways people, uh, women uh, masturbate, you know, the kind of things uh, they use, how often uh, how often do they masturbate? Has anyone run into them masturbating? Like, you know, where are the places that they've masturbated at? So it is important to sort of talk about these things, talk about the reality of women's pleasure so that we so that we know that it exists and we find points to relate to. Um, and of course, like, you know, when we associate sex with only reproduction, men's bodies are also talked about only in terms of virility and focus on things like erectile dysfunction and sperm count. And, even, and men, when we prioritize men's pleasure then condom use also takes like a back seat and there have been many situations uh, uh, and we can see key like you know the onus of contraception usually only falls on women when actually we should be talking a lot more about condoms and uh, this is also something that will come up later in the consent section where uh, Hamsi will be speaking and uh, Uh, so, yeah, one of the things that also uh, biases 
दैट क्रिएट दिस आइडिया ऑफ की ओ सेक्स मतलब रिप्रोडक्शन वी थिंक की नॉन रिप्रोडक्टिव सेक्शुअलिटीज दैट इज क्वेयर सेक्शुअलिटीज डोंट काउंट की लाइक क्वेयर सेक्स डज नॉट काउंट यू नो लाइक ऑल ऑफ दीज क्वेश्चन आर कम अप यू हाउ डू गेट पीपल हैव सेक्स थिंग्स लाइक दैट एंड टू थिंक दैट इट्स नॉट समथिंग दैट इज यूजफुल और टू थिंक दैट दैट डज नॉट एक्जिस्ट यू नो इट ऑल्सो कम्स फ्रॉम दिस आइडिया की लाइक यू नो वी थिंक की सेक्स इज ओनली अबाउट रिप्रोडक्शन and in extreme situations queerness can also be seen as a disease and as a result of that we also hardly ever talk about safe sex for queer people because we have so much of an emphasis on key like okay contraception mean matlab ki preventing pregnancy we think ki in queer sex because there's no uh, like uh, there's less chances of pregnancy that we don't need to talk about it but we actually do like safe sex for queer women like even though like the chances of pregnancy are less then we still need to talk about uh, the different kind of like you know uh the ways in which people can stay protected uh i think one of the biggest biases that we also feel uh comes about from are uh, not prioritizing pleasure and prioritizing reproduction is ki we think ki pino vaginal sex is asli sex that we put pino vaginal sex at the center of everything we put penetrative sex at the center of everything and it does not allow us to expand our understanding of pleasure there's actually a huge world of pleasure beyond just penetrative sex uh so we have a lot of different primers we try to focus on things like in sex oral sex uh what are the different ways of staying safe like of safe sex even like you know safe sex is not just about penetrative sex how do you stay safe while performing different kind of sex acts and how do you expand your idea of pleasure like try humping like you know it's quite safe and but it's also like you know uh i know okay like you know some people even uh only consider uh pino vaginal sex hello can you all okay okay sorry i just looked at the wrong uh, part of the chat uh, i see you okay okay okay, okay okay sorry i got confused like open niche yeah so you know like we even have this idea of the galaxy of outer course we only think of sex as inner course like you know penis vagina and the jaga bahar jaga and that 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 is real sex but there's so much more about pleasure if we think of sex as exchanging pleasure then even kids thing is about kissing is a big part of sex even grinding like you know dry humping all of those things using sex toys masturbation so the the whole world of sexuality is filled with so many ways of exchanging pleasure and this also allows us to even shift the focus to female pleasure if we stop prioritizing penetrative sex so much then it will also open up because we also also know key like a lot of women orgasm from clitoral stimulation as well so it also so it when we open up our idea of pleasure then it really helps us uh uh have like you know happy or sexual lives and be able to solve these problems that come from these biases and i think one of the most important things of not prioritizing pino vaginal sex as the only kind of sex which is legit is that it also allows us to think of queer sex as something that is not unnatural like when we accept that sex is about exchanging pleasure and there's many ways like and that pleasure can be derived from many sexual acts and that sex is for pleasure not just reproduction it also automatically reduces the stigma on queer sex we will stop thinking about queer sex as unnatural because we have broadened our framework of thinking about sex uh another thing that comes up is ki like you know this idea that libido is normal ek identical for all but actually like uh sexuality like all of us have our own uh, sexuality like you know our sexualness is also along a spectrum so some people might have a high libido some people might have a less libido some people may, may not want to have sex at all and like when we think ki when we think ki oh libido has to be the exact same and the matching matching in every couple or every uh, then we also start like you know i think in certain spheres asexuality is also seen as a disease or a problem that needs to be solved when it isn't and when both or uh, like you know as long as something is not affecting your uh, daily life then it's uh with the gif so it's not plain but um but this idea of like you know normalizing what uh, sex uh, sex drive like there's no normal sex drive it is your sex drive and whatever you, ha- however you manage it or however you live with it is good and um so actually like maybe if you're talking about queer sex and actually even uh, even like a heterosexual couple can have i can see that there's a question ki can you explain the term queer sex in detail i'll just quickly touch upon that actually there's so many ways like anal sex and oral sex can happen between people of any uh, 
like uh, between between two males between two females between people who are intersex so like when we even expand this idea of sex we also do, we also just like queer the idea of sex in general uh, so you know uh, so uh, when i say ki like you know we need to destigmatize queer queer sex i kind of mean ki like any other form of sex that is not uh, pen uh, just like pen vaginal sex uh, so and okay uh, now masturbation masturbation is also when we think of sex only as reproduction and not pleasure we completely like think you masturbation or uh, masturbation is just secondary it's not a real like it's not the real deal but masturbation is also sex with yourself like you know a, you do get enjoyment you do get pleasure out of it it does give you it allows you to understand um it allows you to understand uh that uh Uh, understand your own sexual needs and uh, sometimes like you know the kind of stigmas that exist around masturbation if you masturbate too much like your penis will fall off there are so many masturbation myths that exist and uh, we need to also like you know break those and uh, allow masturbation to be something that we give that we give enough attention to as much as sex because and uh, not let it be a source of shame like i remember one of the sticky question questions that we asked on ai once ki what have you been shamed for uh someone had written ki like i've been called a muthal because like you know because because i masturbate and like you know uh, that people have been called names for masturbating uh uh so this is like uh, we, we also have like a video about masturbation uh, so can someone play it or do i need to yes uh you can go to videos okay 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 i'll yeah. play okay start with you Old wives' tales on masturbation. Ma, masturbation is not as good as the real thing. Oh ho, beta, ऐसे नहीं कहते. तो फिर all orgasms are different. अगर orgasms की ranking करनी ही है, तो women's strongest orgasms are by their own hand, beta. Second, by someone else's hand. And the weakest orgasm through generic thrust. Masturbation. It's okay. It stopped. Devas Mata, you can continue with the slide. Devas Mata, I think you're still muted. yeah so yeah like breaking these stigmas around masturbation like you know you also need to break the stigma around it and also acknowledge the fact that masturbation is great like masturbation is also like a part of having a great sex life like uh, and uh, having like great mental sexual health and uh, in like masturbation is great we also have like masturbation poetry contest every year and our masturbation may like you know hashtag #masturbation may on aoi is like always like a huge success because people want to explore that part about themselves uh so yeah i think uh now like uh, so what we need to do is destigmatize pleasure uh when we free ourselves from these biases of sex only being for the sake of reproduction of contraception being only about birth control and uh when we uh, when we start accepting that when we start accepting the truth that a lot of us are having sex for the sake of pleasure and stop feeling guilty about it uh then it allows us to think of our sexual health in very different ways to real and and to like not think about sex as just you know general sex and like there's an entire world of pleasure that can open up for us and that is important okay so this is like a meme we love memes because of course we need to have pleasurable ways of like spreading like a pleasure message of pleasure positivity uh and uh, so yeah at aoi we also encourage sex uh, sexual expression and discovery we have so many stories about uh, people uh, people who have learned to have an orgasm for the first time or who had like uh, or like you know who just experienced orgasms for the first time uh, we have a lot of people like sending in like hindi poetry like you know hindi erotic poetry uh, uh like i think our latest masturbation shairi contest was actually about masturbation fantasies what are the fantasies that you masturbate to and this person was like a fantasy poem was about tom hiddleston uh so we uh, we encourage people to uh, you know talk about their sexuality and to talk about what they want and what they like and all of these things uh so i think like 
at the basis of at the base of it education oneself on the idea of sexualness as a human fact is an exercise in breaking binaries and proceeding from there uh, if we accept that uh, sexualness like a sexual needs it's just a human need and uh, that we all have sex uh, like not everyone but like all those who are us who want to uh, and that you know sexuality is like all of our sexualities are diverse and there's nothing really like abnormal or unnatural about like anything that gives you pleasure and that anything that is being done with uh, anything that is being done with consent so we when we start accepting accepting like normalizing sexuality and normalizing different kinds of sexualities and different ways of having sex different ways of sharing pleasure with consent then it becomes then we allow then we also allow us to like take our sexual health seriously and be like more healthy in terms of our mental sexual health and everything else and uh, now i'll hand over to hamsi who will be taking us through the section on consent so for this part of the presentation i'm going to have to shift to my own screen Are you all able to see it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are you able to see it properly? Um, right now it's not. Ma'am, you okay. It's doing it. Okay. Yes. Now, now is it proper? Now, okay. On your feet. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, can, yeah, if you can full screen it. Yeah. Okay, okay I am on full screen. So it's called slide show, and then it will just play your slides. This is on Google Slides, so it may not have that feature, I'm afraid. But is this legible? Yes, ma'am. So I'm so sorry for this inconvenience. We're going to have to uh, carry on like this. Um, so as Devasmita left off at this point, that sexualness is a human fact, uh, if we uh, can frame it that way, we'll also allow us ourselves to understand that desire is also a human fact. It's an emotion we all feel. It's uh, it's 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 common for everybody. It's it's a common emotion. It's uh, everybody has it. It's natural. So in um, cases of uh, asexuality, also desire is there, but it may not have the same shade of sexuality, but on a different scale, desire still exists. And uh, each one's desire is different. Uh, so when we speak of consent, it's to acknowledge that we all do have different desires. And uh, uh, we ought to acknowledge it. It's We ought to recognize it. Um, so what happens when we shift the conversation in this way is uh, that we start uh, understanding consent as not one fixed state of being not one fixed interaction, but uh, a host of um, responses, a host of feelings. And so it's it's not like a one press button where it's just yes or no. Uh, because if we do that, uh, we may misunderstand a yes as a forever yes. We may take a no for a forever no. But uh, in we won't understand the process of uh, negotiating between what lies um, it, about what lies between yes and no. So uh, uh, it's it's a so it's it's a practice in communication. It's uh, it's like just like communication is a skill and one needs to develop it. Uh, the same goes for consent. Um, there are certain codes that we need to uh, master, and in order to do that, uh, we need to develop the skills for it. And so it's basically about uh, communicating and uh, being okay with the process of it, acknowledging that there are there is a gradation of 
consenting. Um, so in order to explain, to further break down the complexity of Mo, uh, we created something called, um, uh, we, we created a guide called Stages of Consent. Uh, we'll be sharing all the links we're referring to, all the articles and essays and guides from AI that we're referring to. We'll be sharing with the moderator who will further convey to you um, these different uh, articles. Uh, and so uh, when we uh, created this guide called Stages of Consent, it was to look at uh, exactly this uh, contextual nature of consent, how it is different in different situations, in different relationships, uh, so I'm just going to read out one such narrative that uh, came in from there. Barbara, 22, bisexual female. It was the first few weeks of our relationship. We were just getting to know each other. We got quite far that night where I told him that I did not want to have sex. He said it was fine and didn't bring it up again. After a while, I felt bad because he planned the surprise getaway and I was I was like, Abhi isko bura lagega types. So I told him, you know what, I don't mind. It wasn't anything he did, just me guiltying myself into saying it. I remember his reply so clearly. He said, it should never be I don't mind, but I want to. He would never make me do something that I just didn't mind. We get it a lot, that we should not lead someone on, feel obligated to say yes sometimes. But why should that be if you're not ready? Love making is not about a system. So uh, this example is to quote that, um, there can be different equations involved between different people and consent is all about getting to uh, reading between those lines and because it's a process and it's not one fixed thing you get to define it um, uh, so there are these aspects that come into play uh, while, while we're talking about consent and one of them is um, it's a uh, dynamic uh, nature so uh, when we uh, keep into consideration different uh, ways of consenting in different situations, what we're doing is we're uh, prioritizing comfort. We're uh, prioritizing what is enjoyable. Um, we acknowledge that there is a power dynamic. And uh, sometimes we tend to give more power to the, per the person who gives consent rather than the person who asks. So uh, it's all about a careful consideration of it and uh, respecting what everybody truly desires and uh, getting to know what each one's want is, what each one's desire is. Uh, to further facilitate this uh, breaking down, we created uh, a guide on how to say no because uh, sometimes saying no can uh, come across as extremely harsh to the person on the receiving end of it and can come across and can be extremely tricky for the person declining and what can happen um, on on, uh, on the worst what can happen is the, the message gets uh, totally uh, it becomes very, really vague and not communicated well and so in order to get develop those skills we created a guide which uh, handed out um, simple tips uh, in sexual situations which can uh, help navigate um, the practice of saying no yes and really putting into words your confusion uh, so you will see that we adopt this really uh, fun way of playing with images and different forms. So we like to put everything in terms of comics and memes. And out here, uh, you see a, a, view, a, a glimpse of how the guide is designed. So we have the uh, helpers are full of these kinds of images and texts. Uh, what some, there was one other project that we undertook was called Sex Actually, uh, where we. Uh, it, with the emergence of the Me Too movement, we asked a lot of uh, uh, people to come in and uh, share their own experiences of being in sexual situations where they found consent and uh, just being in the situation extremely messy. 
and they they wrote extremely frankly about uh, the different uh, context in which they had to um, apply consent and uh, one thing that emerged was um, in hetero heterosexual situations like long term relationships or like marriage consent is understood as given but uh, you're one of those accounts that told us that it's actually uh, a constant negotiation and uh, in marriage one just assumes that you know it's it's part of the deal it's these are conjugal rights and uh, it's it's given but uh, in fact in even in a marital setup um, it's 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 an everyday negotiation it's something that needs to be uh, communicated and worked on every day uh, here in this uh, account what uh, the person told us was uh, in her marriage uh, she was the one with uh, the weaker libido and it uh, so turning down sex always always got in uh, a lot of manipulative ways of getting into it so we realized that on the, on one hand um, uh, violence on one end can can be extreme but uh, on a day to day basis it's it's more manipulative behavior and coercive behavior that can come across as hurtful so um, when we try to understand consent as an active choice and desire um this uh, these um crimes get ironed out uh, we build a world towards a more enjoyable frame so one other thing one other uh, device that we employ in order to um communicate these uh, finer aspects of uh, you know everyday tricky uh, respect related areas is um uh, we cre we created a column called small doubts where um, we deal with we deal with questions that uh, we, our audiences have come up with they have been in certain situations and they tell us about it and so we uh, uh we choose certain uh, questions that that can be applied to a lot of situations and uh, we break down for them what they can do uh what behavior they could uh, put forth and what kind of an etiquette like manners is the answer to understanding the tricky business of respect of being um, uh making someone else comfortable so uh what uh, this column helps us to do is uh look at a situation very lightly and go through different guidelines uh in in a very systematic manner so um, along with the other articles the these are some of the things that we'll be sharing with you through your moderator uh so when it comes to etiquette what happens is uh, one thing that we uh, observe is a lot of times uh consent can be a gendered understanding also um uh, it's if we do not look at uh, sex as mutual pleasure uh, consent gets weaker and so um, we need to recognize that um, you know on, on the uh, on the lighter shades of uh, uh, violence um, control and manipulation can be ways of controlling women's uh, minds and bodies uh, and so when we stop looking at mutual pleasure and if we stop uh, uh, giving it careful consideration uh, then at uh, on on the very end on on an extreme end we stop um, uh, letting women decide for themselves what they want we start uh, uh, controlling their bodies and we in in the process the women's pleasure becomes less important uh one example of a sex act that like a sexual behavior that uh, is violating is stealing which is when without any permission without any knowledge of the partner uh when the male partner removes the condom in the middle of the sex that's when um, it's 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 a highly non consensual act and that's what is referred to as stealing which is an example of 
um, put putting male pleasure first. So uh, while we speak of uh, foregrounding male pleasure and not keeping sexual uh, mutual pleasure into picture is when um, uh, we also encounter um, a similar ter uh, terrain when it comes to uh, contraception. Um, uh, when So because contraception is directly related to sexual health, consent is also directly related to sexual health. Um, we conducted a poll with our uh, uh, audiences once when we asked them um, what was the first time they had to take emergency contraceptive pills. So uh, from the answers, what emerged was uh, men refused to wear condoms and uh, the onus of taking the emergency contraceptive pill uh, automatically fell on uh, the women's uh, shoulder. It became the women's onus to uh, look after their sexual health, uh, when in fact, ideally, it should be a shared responsibility. So uh, when we when we uh, speak of contraceptives, when we speak of consent in terms of contraceptives, in terms of contraception, uh, we need to know that uh, unprotected sex focuses on male pleasure and in the in the process uh, uh, a lot of women's agency gets spoken for spoken on behalf of so um it's it's that that kind of a conduct is opposite of uh, what is enjoyable and pleasurable for all involved so um uh, in that sense uh, uh, when uh, this all of this is to say that when we tie it, if we when we tie consent with desire, these these imbalances get straightened out. Um, so it's very important that we understand consent as marzi, which is uh, the Hindi word for an active choice. It's a, it's 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 a um, it's an outright expression of desire. We created a video which spoke of. Um, sex in and sex and consent in different contexts through a video which was full of song and dance and fun so as to highlight pleasure so we would like to conclude the presentation with uh, uh, showing you what the video was about um so rupali if you can uh, yeah i'll play it
चढ़ी चढ़ी ऊब डूब पानी डर लेंगे आ गए थे भूले जवानी डियर डोंट डिस्टर्ब बोलू सैया डोंट डिस्टर्ब बोलू वो बोले रानी हारी डेड लाइन इश्क की कहानी तन मन से हुई मेहरबान कभी मैं बोलूं जान कभी वो बोले जान कभी मजनू गधा तो कभी लैला पहलवान मैं खुद अपने मर्जी के मालिक मकान अगर ना चाहूं तो इश्क का मेरी जान तुम से किया किया कभी मन से किया सखी जो भी किया जान मन से किया की बूंदों सांझ तक के जाए उस कमीने को मन मेरा नजर कहा आए किया ना ही फन से किया सखी जो भी किया वो 
That was amazing, ma'am. I think everyone in the participants and from the chat box, it's very much miserable how everyone was enjoying your creativity that you put into the videos. Really appreciate it. Uh, Thank you. So we have a few Enjoy. questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, how to make sure someone practices safe oral sex is using condoms safe while practicing it? Uh, so yeah, like uh, in fact, like we have a couple of like uh, we have the oral sex primer, which will like give you the answers to all of it. But like at a very basic level, yes, like you know, wearing condoms, uh, having condoms, uh, using condoms during oral sex is also important. Like it prevents you know STIs because you can like STIs can even come from like you know cuts and there are a lot of different ways of it happening. And uh, I think like even the primers that we share, you will be able to get like much more detailed answers there. And, um, you know, even dental dams exist for like, you know, oral sex on a vagina. Although like dental dams are not like available in India and like it's like very difficult to find. But, you know, there are DIY tutorials where you can cut a condom and you can use that as a dental dam. And... Uh, and yeah, like uh, like someone's asking, can dental dams be used for oral sex? Like, I don't think it's very common, but I think like if you want to try it and go, then go ahead. Like, be like the revolutionary who brings it into practice. Like, I know that it's not used very commonly, but it's the two methods for like practicing safe sex, like on a vagina. So yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the last question would be: How often should one have sex? Um, it's, how do you want to answer that again? It's it's contextual. There is no sex cannot be understood in in polar terms. You know, right or wrong, or this much or that much. It's it it totally depends on who you're having sex with, how much your partner wants it, vis a vis you wanting it. So it it all depends on uh, what you desire and um yeah. There is no description to it yeah yeah like as long as it's consensual and as long as it's like as long as you have the time for it also like you know then there doesn't need to be any shame attached to it like as long as there's consent and you're safe and so it's all good thank you ma'am I, I think that is all for uh, the session mm -hmm. now uh, we can thank you we can ask thank dr harvey thank you ma'am we can ask Dr. Uh, Dr. Arjun, can you hear me? So would yes. you like to uh, start with your presentation now? Yes, I already click on my slides. Uh, so are you start? Uh, yes, it's here. Thank you very much. Uh, so hello, my friends. I'm Dr. Arjun, and I'm working as an assistant professor in the Department of Community Medicine. So I would like to thank the previous speakers. They will set a stage for our next presentation, which is on the contraception. So I understand you all are in a very great mood after seeing that wonderful video and the discussion. Uh, but we also need to understand that, I mean, uh, that uh, the, my presentation is mainly focused on you as being a doctor, right, being as a medical. So once you know that when you have non-medical friends with you, so many of the time they seem you as a one's uh, source of chan uh, channel of information, right, in the major source of information. So they don't see whether you are a first year undergraduate student or last year undergraduate students. They always believe that you are already a doctor and they always ask questions related to contraceptions and the STI and RTI. So my next presentation is on contraception and then STI and RTI. So I will definitely not talk about the technical details of the contraception, but the conceptual framework, because the technical details are already given in your textbook and which you will learn during your curriculum. But the conceptualization of the contraception is often missed while we learn our MDBS study, right? So we never discuss about that. So the outline of my presentation would be the what is contraception, why we are discussing contraception as of now, and what are the available options in the India, and what are the expecting problems in India related to contraception, and what need to be done in future, right? So first of all, we need to understand the two terms between contraception and the family plan. As the speaker, the previous speaker has already told, the sex is mainly 
done with the two purpose one reproduction second is the pleasure so in an entire world every living animals do a sex but they do not, and every every animals do a sex for the pleasure and sometimes for the reproduction but they do not have a control that when we can avoid a sex to turn into a reproduction right but human being is a social animal we have a technology we have a evolution that we can do a sex for pleasure without turning into a reproduction right so when we are doing a sex but we don't want a reproduction in that so we apply some methods which is called as a contraception but contraception is a very narrow term in a broader sense we call this a family planning because the ultimate goal of the contraception is to limit your family size right again the limit the family size is the older concept it is not only limiting the size but also important is to spacing between two child right we know from the medical point of view the spacing is also equally important so that terms go to the family planning and the outcome of the family planning is to the welfare of the family so now which term is a family welfare family welfare is a very broad, broad topic which include contraception spacing between two child and the size of the family so you will be wonder to know that india was the first country in the world to phase a uh, family planning program in india which was started in the 1951 and we have so much to learn from the history of our family planning program and the next slide you can see two pictures and i i rightly chose the word horror of the 1970 you know the india was the first country to plan the family planning program but in 1970 we tried a emergency uh, contraception act in which we tried to uh, sterilize the male which has a two child so government had decided how many child one couple should have and based on that they, they incentivized the sterilization process in the second picture you can see that the uh, one male is uh, gifted with the clocks and the ghee bottles and the radio and tv so it was happened that the incentivization process was used very unethically and even you can see there are very older men so older men get into this sterilize right they were no used to get sterilize a person who is more than 60 years of age but to get that incentive uh, even there was a cases where the one single man was undergone the twice for the vasectomy right the one vasectomy is more than enough but even the single man who goes under the twice of the vasectomy even there was a case reported in a village sarpanch is some enemy so to just to have that uh, rivalry he sent the uh, unmarried men to the sterilized camp and he got sterilized right so there was so much blunder we have made in the 1970 and people afraid with the term of the contraception and the, the most of uh, uh, the most important learning we should get from the family planning is that the size of the family and the method of the contraception should not be decided by the doctor should not be decided by the state but it must be decided by the couple why we will explain later right so again my presentation is based on the two part the one is that for a layman for a person for a human being we also need to understand about the contraception but being a medico being a undergraduate student you can be seen as the most authentic source of getting the detail of the contraception from your peers from your family members from your community then we need to have a uh, authentic detail for that the first uh, the previous presenter has said stage very nicely but we need to have a a uh, technical knowledge with us right being a vr medical so first of all we need to understand that we have a population problem right we have a 58% of the population who are in the reproductive age group 15 to 40 15 to 45 years of age group but there is unmet need of contraception for 44% so what is the unmet need of contraception one couple who is active in a sexual life they don't want a child but still they are not practicing any of the contraception method so it is called as a unmet need of contraception in india half of the population still not using any contraception method even though they don't want a child why so why it is so because uh, the couple think that there is a low risk of pregnancy right if we do sex there are very less chance we get pregnant there is some religious barrier i mean so many religious or organizations are opposing the contraception methods and the third is that there is a lack, lack of knowledge there is a lack of access and there is a fear of side effects right so we the, being a medical person and being the healthcare provider we need to break this barrier related to knowledge access and the knowledge regarding side effects right so family planning we need to understand that the family planning can prevent 25% of the maternal death as well as family planning can also prevent 25% of the infant death it is not the nicu and icu need to prevent a, uh, maternal and the infant death but the knowledge regarding contraception and power in the hands of the couple can definitely do a miracle while to decrease the maternal and the infant death right 
and as the couple needs how to uh, limit the size of the family and how to space between the two child then it can definitely uh, do the welfare for the family for the community as well as for the nation right so uh, i just to sensitize you what is the trend in the india right now i assume that you know the contraceptive methods as of now so in india we are focusing so much on the permanent contraceptive methods right which is the sterilization which we call the female tubectomy so the 77% of the are all contraceptive methods goes into the sterilization which is the permanent method why we are focusing on the temporary contraceptive methods only for the 20 27% in which condom is only 11% let's see for some developed country right you can see the pie chart for the united kingdom where the sterilization process account only for 8% while the oc pills oral contraceptive pills is 26% and condom is 25% while you see the japan it is only 74% 74% population are using as condom while the sterilization is only 1% right and even in korea you can see the condom and the oc pills are making the larger chunk by cost sterilization is only 21% so why this chart we need to uh, think over it right and why it has happened in india the most of the blames uh, will go to us the community of the doctor the teaching of our being uh, during the mbbs is like that uh, i will tell you in the detail why i am saying that the blaming should be on the doctors because our teaching is like that we prescribe the contraception and which is very wrong so we understand it so uh, just the basics of that i am not going into the very technical detail you can get the technicality part from your textbook and from the internet and i will also share the who book on the contraception with you on your Uh, with the help of moderator through whatsapp but we can divide the contraception basically on the three part the one is the temporary method and one in the permanent method you know what is the temporary method and the permanent method in the permanent method when you once adopt the permanent method you cannot revert back to your fertility it is the end of your fertility right the second the division is that some methods are the used before sex or during sex while some methods are used after sex right so the method we use before sex which is called as a precoitus method while the method which is being used after the sex which is called as a postcoital method and the third uh, the categorization is based on the types of the method which is the natural method barrier method hormonal method iud and the sterilization which is the permanent method right so uh, let's go into the detail so the first is the natural family planning method which is also called as the fertility awareness method uh, this was the very oldest method of the contraception in which the female sense their uh, changes in the body due to ovulation and they decide the safe period right so you seems like it is a very older method but you will be surprised to know this method has the most commonly used even in the urban area even in the couple who is very educated right because the other methods are not well explained to them so what uh, what are this uh, uh, fertility awareness method so there are many fertility awareness method i am not going, going into the detail but all the fertility awareness method depends on the female subjectivity right female has to sense the changes in the body so the first is the standard days method which is widely practiced which is to identify the safe period so girl uh, girl or woman decide that my menstrual cycle is 28 days then the after menstruation 8 to 16 days is the safe period and we can have a sex in that period so it will the lower chance of getting pregnant right so this is the standard day method there is a calendar method there is a mucus method so a woman can sense the changes in the secretion of the vagina so vaginal secretion will be tested between two finger and based on the changes of the vaginal secretion they decide whether ovulation has been uh, occurred or not and based on the ovulation they decide the safe period there is a basal body temperature method and the combination of any two methods so i am not going into the detail of this method i will say the detail ppt with you so you can read by yourself so what are the pros and cons of the fertility awareness method as i already told you that these method are very old right so there are some pros there are some benefits what are the benefits it is free there is no side effect you don't need anything for that there is no interruption on sex right you need not to wear condom in between you not to take the pills for that right so it is a very free it is very no side effect there is no interest on in sexual activity and it is widely accepted by the religious organization right but there are some cons so there is no sexually transmitted infection prevention by using this method and that there is uh, the, the major disadvantage of this method is that you need to be very disciplined so you can have a sex between the safe period only but for the rest of the day you cannot have a sex right 
so which is practical not possible right so sex is not a just like a calendar event so but if you are not in safe period then you you may need to avoid sex so it, for that you may need to be very disciplined so again it is a very primitive technologies very primitive in the oldest method but still widely practiced right so we need to uh, have a understanding for the pros and cons but it should not be promoted right so the second one which comes is the barrier method so you know how fertility occurs the uh, from the male genital penis semen goes to the vagina then it uh, travels to the uterus where the ovum is already there semen goes to the uterus and then uh, it get fertilized and the, how the pregnancy occurs in the barrier method we need to uh, prevent the flow of the semen right so we, uh, it can be done by two way we can uh, cover the penis to flow this uh, flow of semen or we can cover the cervical opening the uh, uterus opening and we can uh, uh, prevent semen entering into the uterus and based on these two principle we have a two kind of majority we have two kind of a barrier method one is a male condom and second is a female condom right so male condom so male has to wear it on a penis so that the semen cannot flow into the vagina while in the female condom female has to wear a condom with that they prevent semen goes into the uterus and this is how the pregnancy can be avoided right so uh, we know that uh, there are two kind of condom male and female but in india the availability of the female condom is al uh, always questionable so there are certain advantage of male condom over female condom so male condom is very easy to use right because you can see penis is outside you so you can see whether you have uh, uh, wear the condom correctly or not right it is very cheaper the male condom is very cheaper uh, so the both condom male condom and female condom is the only method which gives you protection for the unwanted pregnancy and also it gives a uh, uh, assurance of the prevention of the sexually transmitted infection right so this is the only method which can save you from the pregnancy as well as it can save you from the uh, sexually transmitted infection right so uh, uh, i will give more focus on the conducts as of now because as i told you the technical details will be get from the textbook but we are not uh, taught in detail regarding the condom so first of all if you gonna buy a condom some things you need to uh, think before that number one is condom is made up of latex latex is a kind of a rubber so condom should not be stored in a direct sunlight if condom is being displayed if you go to a medical store and if you find that condom is being displayed outside then you should not buy the condom because it's a rubber it can be destroyed by the heat so it should be always stored in the cool and dark place while you purchase a condom so if you are a, uh, a frequent user of condom, so you come to know that whether you are a lactose, uh, uh, latex allergy or not. It is a very rare, but some people have a latex allergy. For that, there are some non-latex condoms are also available, but it is also very rare, so we are not going to detail for that. So once you buy a condom, you always need to check expiry date for the condom, right? So once you have uh, purchased a condom, then the st uh, story start with the wearing the condom. So uh, I can also see some of the chats while uh, they are asking the effectiveness. So the standard method, if you wear a condom with the standard method, then the chances of getting pregnancy even after wearing condom is only 3%. So 100 times you do a sex, only 3% you can get a pregnancy. But in an actual scenario, in a real world, the failure rate of condom is 14%. Means 100 times some person do a sex, 14 times, 1, 4, 14 times condom may fail then why it is happening it is not the failure of condom it is a failure of user user is not using the condom correctly so there are certain things we need to understand number one we always need to check expiry date number two we always store condom in cool and dark place number three in india most of the condom i mean the all the condoms are water based lubricant friendly right now what is water based lubricant lubricant are of two type water based and oil based so what happening in India currently in a community practice is we found that people use oil, hair oil, moisturizer, cream, petroleum, jelly as a lubricant. But these all are oil based, right? If you are using oil based lubricant with condoms and there are higher chances of condom tear, right? If your condom will tear, then the pregnancy will occur, right? So you always need to use water based lubricant. Then the question can become what are the water based lubricant? So there is no available water-based lubricant in your house. You cannot find any water-based lubricant during your household items. But you should purchase the water-based lubricant. But before that, you also need to understand that all the condoms, most of the condoms are pre-lubricated. So most of the time, you need not to lubricate your condom, right? 
but even though you want to lubricate on condom you always go for a water based lubricant so what if you do not have any water based lubricant with you then the literature says that the saliva is the better lubricant right if you do not have a water based lubricant then saliva can be used as a lubricant but you should not and you never use oil based lubricant they can definitely deteriorate the condom and the chances of condom tear will be very high right so these are the do's and don'ts and the last and the most important thing is how to wear a condom so uh, i understand there are the male and female partner but everybody need to learn that how to wear a condom right so if you uh, you have checked the expiry date if you uh, uh, pick a condom to use so first of all condom should be always wear on the erect penis right so you can see the step a b c d so while a it's shown that the uh, penis uh, penis is the erect and you should hold the condom by the tip of the condom so there is some space on the tip of the condom this space is being made to collect the semen so while wearing the condom it is very essential you press that tip right just to have some space on the top of the penis if you don't hold that uh, uh, the front part of that condom then what happen the condom will uh, adjust on your penis very tightly then there will be no space to the semen to be collected right and there can be higher chance to condom tear so you have to create some space on the top of the penis or uh, uh, while uh, uh, holding the condom like this so it will create a space then you have to just uh, roll the condom down till the base of the penis right now what the next step you have to check whether you have provided enough space on the tip of the penis right you in the in the diagram you can see there is a space on the tip of the penis so this is the correct and you also need to check for the air bubbles in your condom so there should be, there should not be any major air bubble on the condom right if there is a air bubble just like a mobile screen you can see the air bubble there are higher chance of the condom breakage so number one i am going to repeat because it is very important expiry date storage of the condom using the right lubricant uh, wearing on the erected penis uh, providing space to semen collected on the top of the penis while holding the condom while rolling it down roll it down to the base of the uh, penis and just check for the air bubble so this is the standard method of wearing condom which will not be taught to you during your academics but it is very important you can see also youtube video i will send a link of youtube video of the demonstration of wearing a condom and moderate it and share it with you on the whatsapp and the last rule is that you should not wear double condom right there is a very common myth in the community that we wear a double condom like double gloves it will give us a more uh, as assurance it is not like that because if you wear a double condom the condom condom friction can tear the condom right and it can lead to the unfailure contraception so there is only one uh, condom at a time and you always uh, should uh, change your condom right while having a sex even in the last sex, uh, uh, speaker is uh, point out the point for the vaginal and anal sex even with a single partner you need to change your condom right uh so definitely it's not the promotion of the anal sex but if it is happening in a nature then the uh, for a, with a single partner if you are doing a vaginal sex you need to change a condom for the anal sex right so this is all about the condom and you have to change condom there is no reuse of a condom there are no condom available in india which can be reused and uh, that's all about the male condom now the things come as a female condom as i already told you the male condoms are advantageous over female condom as it is easily available it is very cheap it is very easy to wear while what are the problems with the female condom as it is very difficult to insert you can see the diagram female condom the sec second picture female condom should be inserted very deep till the uh, head uh, head of the uterus or the cervical opening right so uh, why it is difficult because you cannot see it but after uh, uh, training you can wear a uh, female condom very easily so it requires little training while male condom you do not require any training but female condom has some advantage so what are the advantage of condom as such so as we as i already told you that the condom is the only way, only method which give you protection for the sexually transmitted infection with the fertility control and the male condom are cheaper and uh, uh, it can be taken without a prescription there is a no contraindication for the condom anyone and everyone can use condom except the latex allergy but for them also there are the non latex condoms are available but what are the disadvantage the main disadvantage is that it can reduce the sensation so for some of the male client they have reported that while wearing condom the sensation is very less for the sex because there is something between penis and vagina so this is one of the uh, uh, major disadvantage 
and the second disadvantage is there is an interruption of sexual experience i mean uh, just imagine a sexual intercourse in uh, uh, one couple is having a sex and uh, they are having a foreplay and in between when the penis is erected they have to break from the sex they have to wear condom and they have to restart it right so some couple doesn't like it because it is an interruption in sex so uh, here the female condom is more advantageous because female condom can be wear before the uh, sex so because there is nothing uh, uh, the concept of erection in female because female condom is not wear, uh, wear on the vaginal cavity so female condom can be inserted even before several hours of the intercourse so there will be no interruption in the sex and the second thing is that the many of the users have reported that the female condom uh, cause very less reduction in the sensation so sensation is being intact so these are the advantage of female condom even female condom will be useful for the female those male partner has not willing to wear the male condom then the female has should be right to protect herself from the sti and rti so female can use that female condom it is available but not in the government healthcare facility you need to purchase it and it is a costlier than male condom so then the uh, there are some other barrier method as well there the uh, spermicide is the chemical which is need to be applied on the vaginal cavity which will kill the sperm's mobility right so there are various kind of uh, spermicide there are also various kind of cervical barriers are available not in india very little available and these are not so popular in india so i am skipping this part uh, later on you can read so the third option will come to the iud which is the intrauterine device again i am not going into the technicality iud is a device one time you insert it it is a opd process there is no nssr need, need to be given even anm can insert iud in a, any of woman right just a simple needle insert in vagina push it iud will be inside the uterus but so what are the pros and cons the advantage is very effective right if compared to barrier method is very effective it is a long term protection it's not like condom or oce pills that you need to do it regularly once you have inserted iud it will give a uh, protection for a uh, uh, depends on the iud 5 or 10 year 3 year so and there is no interruption of sexual activity you need not to worry during sex whether my condom is intact or not and definitely there is no need to remember and even it can be used during breastfeeding but there is a disadvantage the first foremost disadvantage is there is no sti protection sti means sexually transmitted detect, uh, infection and uh, uh, you uh, uh, you uh, intrauterine device iud is some contraindications right so the uh, some woman cannot have iud so the doctor's prescription is needed here for iud and there are some hazards of iud while condom has no health hazard right so the next method come is a hormone based uh, contraceptive this is the most popular method in india again uh, the even previous speaker has also highlighted in india it is thought that the reproduction is the maintaining reproduction and the avoiding reproduction is entirely responsibility of the female right so the what is the oral contraceptive it is a hormonal pill which prevent uh, uterus to come into uh, uh, prevent ovum to come into the uterus and even to implant so you need to take a certain tablets it you need to take it regularly once you take it regularly uh, you will be infertile for that period once you stop it uh, you can uh, gain your fertility back uh, so what are the cons uh, again, there are some contraindications for OC pills. Not every woman can take a uh, OC pill. So once you prescribe your friend OC pills, you need to be very cautious. So uh, there are some uh, absolute contraindications. There are some relative contraindications. There are some health hazards related to OC pills. So once one woman is taking the OC pills, then you need to uh, check that uh, there is there any danger sign is coming up or not. So some medical supervision is needed in the OC pills. And the last option is the permanent contraceptive method, which is the sterilization. We have two sterilization, female and male. Male sterilization, we just uh, cut the fallopian tube, so one cannot transmit to the uterus. Once you do a sterilization, it is theoretically, uh, it is end of the game. You cannot get back your fertility, but there are some uh, there are some cases when we do a re-canalization, I mean, you can fertility back. But once you go for sterilization, you need to think twice because it's a permanent method. And the second method is a male sterilization in which we just cut the vast difference so sperm cannot transport it to the urethra. So you will get a semen, but semen will not have a sperm. So just to compare female sterilization and male sterilization, male sterilization is very easy. There is no general NSSI is required. There is a high effectiveness in male sterilization, right? Uh, and uh, lower failure rate and a very cheap process. But in India, even a single digit, two or three percent male go for male sterilization. Most of the permanent uh, sterilization process done on the female. As I already told in India, we thought that the female has a responsibility to control the size of the family, not male. 
and there are certain myths which is related with the male sterilization number one is the 1970 horror that male has been compulsorily done uh, sterilized so still that fear uh, are there in the community second uh, there is a myth that if we do sterilization on the male male their masculine quality will be decreased you, the, your pleasure of the sex will be decreased but we need to understand that everything will be like that you will also get a semen the same orgasm just the difference is that your semen will not have a sperm and that you cannot see from your eyes right so there is nothing uh, uh, will be changed after vasectomy but still we are struggling to understand the community that the vasectomy is safer because the myths are very strong with that right so uh, as i already told you i am not going into the detail about the process of sterilization uh, someone was asking in the chat box the met, uh, the percentage of the efficacy right so you can uh, see here there are two columns the last column shows the lowest expected rate of pregnancy means percentage means the male sterilization point 0.1 it means 1000 male sterilization operation will be done there will be a one failure case of pregnancy but the prior column shows the typical use as i already told all process are not done in the real world as per the prescribed right we always manipulate the process so the first column shows you the real world scenario while the last column shows you the uh, as if you done as prescribed just like if you buy you know new car so they will told you tata that it will give you 15 km per hour average but actually it gives only 11 why because 15 km per hour average for this smooth road if you don't apply brake frequently just like that if you do everything is told so uh, the last column will be give you efficiency but in the real world the first column which is the actual figure what is the efficiency right so uh, now the things come the post coital method which is known as the ip right if if any couple has a unsafe sex and they realize we don't want a child and they they want to have a uh, they want to stop the pregnancy then they can have a post coital contraception method it is a very huge domain and we need to discuss it right that the uh, post coital method are safe but again it needs a little medical supervision you can take over the counter drug which is i pill if the i pill is not available woman can take four oc pills at a time so four oc pills at a time will work as i pill but it can be it should be taken within 72 hours if you cross the 72 hours then you definitely need a doctor's prescription and doctor's advice if it is more than 3 month then you cannot go for medical termination of pregnancy then the surgical process will come again the surgical process gets the error because in the rural part unmarried girl who is engaged in this uh, unsafe sex and she gets pregnant there is little access to the government healthcare facility and they go end up in the quacks and the quacks is a very un hygienic condition and the most of the abortion end up in the septicemia and even it can take the life of that woman right so uh, we need to create a awareness that the post coital contraception is should be available right it should be available because it is not like that if you are using a condom as a contraceptive method and a condom brush then you need a backup plan which uh, which is the post coital contraceptive method but the post coital contraceptive method should not be used regularly it is not the primary method it should be used as a backup method is there any role of gender in contraception definitely yes i already repeatedly told you that indian society puts all the weightage of the contraception on the female and the male should wear a condom or not it is entirely decided by the female so even in the consent the previous speaker talk about the consent of the sex there should be also consent of the sex how we do a sex who will wear a condom whether condom is necessary or not it is not like that male partner or female partner entirely on self decide what contraception we should choose where to get it so you can get it from any of the store any of the uh, uh, private medical store even if if you are living in a rural area if every asa and the pandal is uh, given a condom free of cost from the napo and you, go, you can also get condom from any of the healthcare facility right and is there is there any issue of availability and use of the knowledge so i already told you that there are so many myths related to contraception and we need to uh, counter that being a medical person right so why we need to get trained for this because you will be the first one who will be uh, contacted by the community to choose the contraception so you can ask me a one single question what is the best contraception and i will tell you we cannot say that because in india we use the cafeteria approach which is the basket method once a couple comes to you right once a couple comes to you to uh, have a counseling for the contraception our duty is to understand them these are the various method available to you this is the pros and cons for condom ocp this is the pros and cons copd this is the pros and cons permanent method this is pros and cons 
the entire responsibility, entire rights to choose contraception lies on the patient's part. Because we cannot prescribe contraception because every couple is different. Every couple's context is different. Once you prescribe them, there will be a higher chance. There will be a poor compliance. But when you counsel them and you give available options and you discuss with them this option has a, this problem, this option has a, this problem, every couple is very different. So uh, once you counsel and once you make uh, your couple empowered to choose the method, then the compliance rate will be very high. So we use the gather approach, we greet the patient, we ask them, we tell them various options, we help to choose, we explain how to use, and we uh, 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 tell them when to return, right? So this is the gather approach we use for the counseling, and this is called as a cafeteria approach. Menu card bees would be given to the couple, and couple can choose the best method for them. It is not a prescription. It is we need to give them a choice, right? So uh, uh, the concept of backup method, it is not like that you, you can uh, use only one contraception method. If you are using OC pills, but you want a protection and an STI, then you can use a condom as well, right? You are using a condom, but if you uh, you are using a uh, intrauterine device, but you want a protection, you can also use a condom. But male condom and female condom cannot be used at the same time, right? Either in a partner, male can use a condom or female can, be, can use a condom. If both will use a condom, then it will create a friction and there will be a chance of a breakage of the condom, right? And uh, this is the last that I'm not going to discuss it. I will share it to you. This is the shows the how the lactational amenorrhea method will be useful to you till how many months it is uh, uh, should be prescribed. I mean, till if breastfeeding women should need to use any contraceptive method or not. So this is all about my contraception PPT. Uh, we have a next topic, which is on the uh, STI and RTI. Uh, sir, before that, can we move, uh, ask uh, answer some questions that have been asked yeah. in the chat box? Sure. Uh, the first question is, how important is it to use condoms to prevent STIs during oral sex in monogamous couples when both partners don't have tattoos or any kind of blood mixing with others? Uh, okay, so it is very good question, uh, but we need to understand that the one person who uh, who can get a STI, the sexual route is not the only only route you get a STI. There are so many other routes other than a sex. So you can get a STI from the hydrogenic route, and you can get a STI from your endogenous bacterial flora. So even though you are a monogamous couple, so they definitely the chances of getting a STI from the oral sex is very low. But it is always uh, better to use condom while oral sex. So there is no fix one plus one to answer. Chances is very low, but you want to be 100% sure, then you need to use a condom because uh, first the practicality, we cannot uh, you know, uh, assure someone's loyalty. And second thing, even they are loyal and monogamous, but still there are chances they can get uh, STI from other route as well. Okay, sir. Uh, next question is, is the reason for failure of condom solely due to impro improper use or can it be due to manufacturing issues also? Definitely. So manufacturing issues can be number one is the expiry date. Number two, you should always purchase the condom which is certified by the government. So there should be a, some uh, marks of the uh, license. And the third, the storage condition. If you are storing a condom in a very hot condition, then there are higher chance of getting a, a, a broken condom. But the thing is that even though you have a, everything is right in your place, then even out of 100 incidents, the three times you will get a condom. Package. Our next question is, can condom cause loss of erection? Uh, uh, psychologically, yes. Uh, theoretically, no. So theoretically, condom cannot uh, cause any of the problem. But there are some psychological issues that condom is causing the reduced senses and condom is causing radial dysfunction. And your thought process is so strong, then it becomes a reality then we need to think for other options. But before using condom, you should not should have the prerequisite assumption that condom will uh, cause the senses, uh, reduce senses, and, and condom will cause the erectile dysfunction. So theoretically, it cannot, but psychologically, it can. So man, many of the sexual problems are psychological. So the treatment should be also psychological. OK, sir. Uh, next question is, which which have more chances of breaking, female condom or male, or male condom? Uh, male condom has a higher chances of breaking, but what is the issue with the female condom is that once you insert the female condom in vagina, it has been reported that uh, you need to insert your penis in the condom. But sometimes what happened, you insert penis between condom and the vagina, right? 
because many of the time we do sex in a hurry and in the dark place so we cannot assure whether your penis is in condom female condom or whether your penis is between the condom and the vagina so uh, to get that assured is very difficult with the female condom but even though if you correctly use correctly and if you are very well trained by using it and definitely the chances of tear is more in male condom than female condom. Uh, do female condoms prevent again against stis definitely, definitely just like a male condom but again if if a if penis is being inserted accidentally between condom and a vagina then there will be a breach mm -hmm. uh, next question are pen pelvic inflammatory disease and ectopic pregnancy in IUD insertion strongly preventing people from using it? And cancer by OCPs likewise? Yes, so there are some uh, contraindications with the IUDs, but with, which are very rare, right? And the most common the, uh, complaint of the IUD is the uh, bleeding and pain. But it is just for a one week. So most of the time, the reasons for Ebola of IUD is a pain and bleeding. Uh, so we try to counsel them it is for a fewer days but sometimes the uh, clients are very reluctant to using that but as the ectopic pregnancy and other are very rare but it is still there so we cannot deny that fact. but every every contraceptive method has some disadvantage so for the intrauterine device the uh, ectopic pregnancy is uh, and so last question is it un bad or unsafe to have a threesome it is not bad who, who am i to decide it is bad or good but uh, definitely being a technical person, I can advise you. It is uh, unsafe in sense of that uh, threesome, we need to you know, plot the various possibility of the threesome. It is a one male into female. Then the, for the safety of other women, a uh, male has to change condom between intercourse, right? So if you, the simple thing is that if we are changing the uh, place of intercourse, you have to change the condom. Even in a single male, in a single female, you are switching from vagina to anus, you have to change condom. Even in two female, definitely you have to change condom. So it seems a little bit inconvenient while having threesome, you are changing condom at every five minutes. So it is not good or bad, I don't know the answer, but uh, there will be a higher chance of getting, getting condom breakage and the other things. Thank you so much, sir. That is all for this session. I think you can continue yeah. with the next presentation. Thank you very much. So the RTI STA presentation is the continuation of our last presentation, and we already told about that. The uh, contraception is not always about the preventing pregnancy, but also the preventing sexually transmitted infection. And sexually transmitted infection and the reproductive transmitted infection is a huge burden on the healthcare system. But it is a very underground. We do not see the patients of them, right? Even during your clinical posting, you hardly see the patients of RTI and STI. Why? I will tell you later. So once we need to understand the difference between reproductive tract infection and sexually transmitted infection, the reproductive tract infection is an infection of a reproductive tract organs, either in a male, either in a female, while sexually transmitted infection is an infection which is transmitted by doing a sex. Right. So this is a two different term. These, these are not synonyms. But we generally use these uh, terms very uh, regularly often together because they are overlapping. So all the sexually transmitted, all the reproductive trace infection, most of the reproductive trend infection are transmitted through sex, right? And the most of the sexually transmitted infection are related to reproductive trait. So that's, that's how it, these are the uh, over uh, overlapping. So first we need to understand how the reproductive trait infection can be spread. There are three major root. One is sexual root. Second is endogenous root. Third is iatrogenic root. What is sexual root? If you do an unsafe sex, you can get a, a sexually transmitted infection or reproductive tract infection. What is endogenous sex? So in, in every human being, there is some bacterial flora. While you have a decreased immunity, your bacterial flora can overgrow and you can have a endogenous reproductive tract infection. And the third one is the iatrogenic infection, which is the infection which can be brought by the medical examination. So females become more victim for that because the female examination needs vaginal inspection it needs pulposcopy so we insert so many instruments we insert our finger doing that examination and if we done it on hygienic practice on hygienic environment then it can lead to the hydrogenic infection this chart is very important to understand because the, all the myths and the stigma related to reproductive tract infection is due to when we are not educating the community regarding this chart if any of the partner is getting reproductive tract infection we directly blame them it is due to a sex Right, even though in the previous question that told us the monogamous relationship. But we need to understand that this is not the only route we can get a reproductive tract infection. There are two other routes as well. 
so these three routes need to be highlighted very oftenly to the community that the reproductive tract infection is not only brought to the unsafe sex there are other route as well right and i have just enlisted some of the most common organism which can lead to the rti and sti uh, you can see that there are some bacteria viral fungal and protozoa so all kind of microorganism can cause rti and sti right so i am not going into the detail for this so what are the symptoms of rti and sti you can read by yourself the most common symptoms will be the ulcer and the swelling and the pain and the discharge so these are the most common rti and sti symptoms which are also swelling pain and discharge you can see the last line which is the pharyngitis so we also need to understand due to oral six we are getting the incidence of uh, sexually transmitted infection of the pharyngitis so also pharyngitis is being included in the uh, this uh, chart so you also you know that there are some myths and the stories are related to uh, st and rti I was reading one interview of the person who has done rape to the uh, girl child, and it is a true for the most of the rape scenario. Uh, there is a, some uh, strong belief in the rural and the tribal part of India that if you do a sex with a virgin, your STI will be cured. And this myth is so strong; it it caused so many rapes in in, in the India, right, with the smaller child. So uh, as as I already told you that uh, there are some myths and the uh, lack of the knowledge related to STI and RTI. but still there are some of the person they have a good knowledge of sti and rti and they visit to the hospital to get their sti and rti cure so let's visit one of the identical hospital of india so this, this is the identical hospital see you can see the first picture you have a long two hour queue once you go to the opd room you have a big dream that i will tell the doctor that i have ulcer on my penis i have a discharge from my vagina but once you enter the opd the scene of the opd is like to picture two there are multiple doctor multiple patients uh, if a male patient there may be a female doctor there is a female patient there may be a male doctor and you don't find any privacy any confidentiality to share your symptoms of rti and sti right so this is a typical scenario so those who have a knowledge they also afraid to share their symptoms so this is why i use that sentence even during your clinical posting you will find patient with rti and sti in very less number because we don't provide a friendly environment where they can open up uh, am i audible yes, sir, sir please go ahead okay so there are some issues with the rti and sti treatment why we are discussing it we don't have a problem pro program for the acne we don't have a program for the common cold but why we need a program for the sti rti sti and rti group of infection which has their sign and symptoms very easily visible it is making you very in a trouble but still there is a very lower rate of getting treatment so there are some cultural barriers right because we seems it is come from the bad source there is some information asymmetry because the committee does not know the information related to rti and sti and we have created a big vacuum of the information committee does not have a information and now the unfortunately this vacuum is filled by the unscientific people right i will specifically use word youtube doctors while we have done survey in our rural practice area with the uh, college student that from where you get your uh, information related to rti st and contraception 99% students of rural part rural part i am focusing on rural part reported that we are getting information from the youtube then we were very happy that youtube is doing very good that they are reaching to the every household then we do a content analysis what they are watching how they are interpreting and we see that 78% of the content was very rubbish right very rubbish it is was totally unscientific so why it has happened because we are not going there we are not providing information unscientific people have captured this market right you can see millions of channel with the millions of subscriber who still says that if you drink cement you can you know build your body if you save your cement you can be a muscular you can you know the youtube channels they promote this kind of myths and even uh, the quack says uh, captured this market of strti uh you know that if you go to the public urinal you always find a number of doctors for the gupta rog which is the term for the sti and rti they all are non degree doctors if you traveling through train you can see the advertisement of the gupta rog specialist in besides world dr samrat ka dawa khana dr basa ka dawa khana even in your newspaper you will see the small small advertisement related to sti rti because we are not reaching there they are going to the quacks and we need to believe that quacks are providing them very friendly environment though they are providing a very garbage medicines 
but the confidentiality they are maintaining. We are not providing space in our OPD to speak up about the STI and RTI. We don't have a friendly approach. That's why the quacks are capturing the market, right? So uh, in STI and RTI treatment in India, we are using a novel approach, which, which is the syndromic approach, right? So the undergraduates from the second and third year must know about this term, but just to conclude within a minute, syndromic approach is an approach in which we do not rely on the laboratory investigator investigation, but we make our diagnosis based on the sign and symptoms only, right? Why we need to go for syndromic approach? The ideal approach is that the patient comes to me, I examine him, I take a blood, I go for a laboratory investigation, I wait for report, and then I give a medicine. This is ideal approach. But in the STNRTI, what we have observed that once patient comes to you, there are higher chance if you wait for the laboratory investigation, the patient may not come to you again, right? There are some stigma. And as I told you, there are so many Dr. Sambrat and Dr. Bassa. So the patient may not come to you again. So, so what we have observed that in the committee, when you are treating STNRTI, you should not lose the opportunity. Once the patient come, you should start treatment from there. And you need to use the syndromic management approach, which is mainly relying on the sign and symptoms, doing the laboratory investigation whenever it is necessary. But we should not wait for the report of laboratory. We should start the treatment. In the syndromic approach, we are using the higher dose of antibiotic and the observed dose. Once patient come to me for the STN-RTI problem, I will examine him. I will use the flow chart and I will give the higher dose observe antibiotics so i don't want to lose this opportunity because the s10 rt is highly infective if that person will be untreated that person can give that s and rti to the that partner and also can give to the sexual partners right so there are some sequence once we need to take history we need to examine them clinically we also need to take a history of the partners we'll do laboratory tests whenever available and whenever applicable but we will not wait for the examination we will provide them treatment we will use this opportunity to promote and provide the condom. We will counsel them for the behavioral change communication. As you know, uh, the person who has a STI at a 10% higher chance of getting HIV, right? So we refer them for the HIV counseling and HIV testing meanwhile, and we also notify that partner. We counsel them, you should bring your partner here and you should be, uh, uh, treat your partner with that. And we follow up the case. So how the syndromic case management happens? Just a quick review, a quick overview. We have a, so many flow chart available on the website and I will share it with you. So just imagine one patient comes to you with the complaint of the vaginal discharge. So first of all, there are some uh, positive organisms we can keep in mind that, that vaginal discharge can be from the trichomonas vaginalis, candida albicans, and some other as well. So what we'll do, first, first we'll take a history. What kind of discharge you have? What is the consistency of discharge? What is the frequency of discharge? Then we assess the risk, whether this STI happened due to the unsafe hygienic practice or unsafe sex. Then we examine whether this discharge is green in color, then it can be trichomonas vaginalis. Whether this discharge is curly white, then it can be a candidiasis, right? So we have examined the patient. Now we provide them treatment. The treatment is based on your provisional diagnosis, right? Some treatment is only one day treatment, some treatment is follow-up treatment. So uh, one, the single dose will be given to the patient in the uh, presence of the counselor. Then we will discuss with them the partner. How many sexual partner you have in last 30 days? Depends on the disease. Some STI doesn't need a partner management. Some STI, most of the STI needs partner management. So we ask them and we counsel them the importance of the partner notification. We advise them to bring your partner to this clinic and to get them treatment. Then we take laboratory sample if necessary. And lastly, uh, uh, lastly, we uh, ask them to follow up after the certain days. It is uh, different for every STI. And we give them some counseling message. So why this uh, STI happened to you? How can you prevent it? And we also counsel them for the HIV testing. So this is how our syndromic test, uh, syndromic management happens, right? Uh, there are multiple examples. We will not discuss it for that. So what are the system in place? So just for an understanding, uh, the uh, program for the STNRT is called as a Suraksha clinic. So every government hospitals are have a Suraksha clinic, right? And uh, we have a uh, treatment. Uh, our treatment for the STNRT is, uh, you know, divided in the uh, uh, treatment kits. So you can see the photograph of the treatment kits. So these treatment kits are available even at a PSC level, right? 
एंड इवन एट ए टर्सरी केयर डेफिनेटली पी एस सी लेवल पर अवेलेबल है तो टर्सरी केयर सेंटर पर अवेलेबल होगा ही सो एट योर मेडिकल कॉलेज सुरक्षा क्लिनिक मे हैव ए डिफरेंट सेटअप बट सुरक्षा क्लिनिक हैज ए सम यू नो लिंकेज विद द गाइनेक ओपेडी सर्जरी ओपेडी एंड मेडिसिन ओपेडी बिकॉज सम पेशेंट कैन गो टू द स्किन ओपेडी विद द अल्सर ऑन द पेनिस बाई थिंकिंग दैट इट इज माई स्किन प्रॉब्लम द स्किन ओपेडी पीपल विल रेफर दैम टू द सुरक्षा क्लिनिक एंड सुरक्षा क्लिनिक पीपल विल ट्रीट द एस टी एन आर टी आई and suraksha clinic will refer that patient to the ictc which is integrated counseling and testing center for hiv testing right so this is the system is there already in place at psc level you will get a sti kit and you are all the anm at sub center level are trained for the sti counseling and sti management so this is you can find your sti treatment and uh, even though you do not have a suraksha clinic in place then the most convenient would be the skin department so you should this uh, you should contact your skin skin doctor so is there any role of gender in sti so yes definitely female are more victims of the sti one independent survey has shown that uh, they go to the community and they check each and every female they found 80% of the female are suffering from the sti this is the very higher statistic but the lowest is the 20% so there is a range 20 to 80% of the population is suffering from the sti and most of them are female right because the female anatomy is like that they are more prone to getting the sti and there is also something to uh, have something with the sexuality in sti so the person who are indulging in the anal sex so we know that the lgbt community the uh, gay gay people are uh, engaging in the anal sex uh, even in the heterosexual couple but more more so often so anal sex is a higher chance to get sti and rti because uh, during anal sex there are higher chances of the condom breakage so even in the developed countries there are the different condom for the anal sex which is thicker in size but in india it is not available except some metro cities so definitely there is something with the sexuality in sti we need to discuss further but uh, we cannot discuss here so being a medico we need we need to empower ourselves for the correct information for sti rt and contraception and we need to be proud messenger for our community and peers right if we do not do our job then the dr samrat and dr basa will take over our market and if our comedy the rise of sti will be there it will definitely affect us the corona has total lesson uh, sometimes we have a attitude dhara vislam mein kuch hua to mujhe kya but abhi aisa nahi hai one self is also yourself so agar aap dusro ka sti account nahi karoge to it will be again comes to you so we need to take that charge at the flag bearer of the correct knowledge of sti rt and contraception and we need to be approachable for our family members and the friends who doesn't have a correct knowledge and we need to fight against this internet misinformation whenever we get chance so thank you very much thank you so much sir with your detailed approach i think all the participants learned a lot today uh, we have a few questions what solution would you propose for increasing privacy and making people with sti rti comfortable in front of a doctor Uh, definitely uh, it is not an individual responsibility it it should be happen at institute level so uh, there is some policy called adolescent friendly health services so in some of the tertiary care center they are running adolescent clinic separately and they have a sex clinic separately if your hospital doesn't have that facility then we need to learn how to communicate with the patients so if you have uh, this idea in your mind then you can you know interpret the non verbal communication of the patient that patient needs privacy so during my uh, my opd setup i sometimes sense that the patient is uh, reporting the abdominal pain and my opd doesn't provide me a space where can i take one patient at a time that i am helpless but i i got that clues that patient needs privacy then i took to the examination room and i asked them do you want to say something right if you have a adolescent you see that parents is standing with them and you are seeing that the adolescent girl or boy is hesitating then you can ask the parents to go out and then you can uh, ask them in privately so best ideal scenario is that one patient at a one time in a one room but many of the times it is not possible then we need to identify that non verbal clues from the patient and we need to respect that and we have to provide the privacy for that patient thank you sir uh, next question is if we if we start treatment based on syndromic approach is it possible to come to a wrong conclusion or prescribe treatment that may have caused more harm than good if yes 
uh, then how can we tackle such situations? Uh, definitely, there is a concept called risk benefit ratio. So, uh, syndromic management always been criticized for the antimicrobial abuse because some research has shown that the 60% of the patient who has been treated on the syndromic management doesn't have any kind of infection. But the risk benefit ratio has already told you the STI is a very highly infective disease, and there are the higher chance that patient will not come back to you for your laboratory report. So that's why the, the, there is a strategy. You can do a laboratory report, but start a medicine, right? Once a laboratory report gives some other finding, then you can switch your treatment. But we should definitely not let go our patient without any treatment because you do not know what happened during that week. They can have an unsafe sex with their partner and then spread to their partner. So definitely there are chances of a wrong interpretation, but we have a strategy of a laboratory investigation and we can change our treatment after that. Okay, sir. Uh, next question is, in spite of using condoms while having sex, is it okay for a female to take emergency contraceptive pills after every time she has sex or just in case because of 14% failure rate of uh, male condoms? So definitely male, male condom failure will not be a hidden phenomenon. If you have a sex, after that you will know that my condom is broken or not. If your condom is intact, then there is no need to take a postcoital contraceptive pills. But if your condom is broken, then you have to take it. So it is not a secret thing. You can you can diagnose it whether my condom is intact or not. If there is any doubt of condom breakage, sometimes what happens? Condom slip into the vagina or anus. So even in that case, you have to uh, have a dead pee after that. But if your condom is intact after the intercourse, there is no need to take pills because these pills are medicines. This is not gems tablets. Gems ki goli nahi hai. Uske bhi to side effects hoti hai. Sometimes very serious side effects. So when when there is when you have a uh, accessibility doctor, you should always go to the doctor and to take this medicine. So there is a very long debate whether the emergency contraceptive pills should be over the counter drug or not. Even though we ban this drug, it will be available in market. But whenever you have accessibility to doctor, you should you should consult first. This is the medicines, hormonal medicine. This is not the nutrition supplement. Thank you so much, sir. I would like to invite Rishika to give a vote of thanks. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, Rishika. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I hope you all enjoyed the session, right? Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us. And thank you to everyone who joined the session and make the, made this bigger. So we hope you continue joining us. And it's not over yet. Over yet. It's just second day. We hope you continue joining us tomorrow and give us the same support. And uh, I really hope this is uh, very useful to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for inviting us. And thank you very much for creating such a platform that during my MBBS days, we we have no platform to discuss about sex. So the participants are very lucky to have such a platform. So thank you very much to the organizers. Thank you very and much. And thank you, sir, for your time. And there is a group activity which would be starting shortly. So I request uh, the participants to please take a look over it.